Thank you, Jesus. Fasin di kau li intro ta fosen di akapatomia elingo angelo fasupri angelo afali di angelo emito pri angelo ag angelo ambeto fini angelo ani o koko sevrin ta pioli anoni angelo amin onondi angelo amondi angelo amain aman amain aman angelo aman aman angelo amino aman angelo angelo zindoki angelo I go am 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 girl am 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 angel am 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 angel am angel am angel of the door am angel of the open door am angel of the open door am angel of the open door am angel from Jesus the open door I am angel of Jesus the open door I bring blessing I bring skill I bring understanding. I bring blessing. I bring skill. I bring understanding. I bring blessing. I bring skill. I bring understanding. 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 Understanding of the body of the Father. Oni koko ajemi o kafi alomade oromi ale oromi ale oromi asobi ani oromi. I mean, not do or me, a cup is to or me, I mean, not grievance to pure or me, a loud team or me, or me or me, I didn't know no or me, a single to an ear or me, or me or cape or me a govo, or me a gambe, or me and get lay, on Golia Galilee, or me non gangalu, I'm on the angali, I'm gali, I'm an angali, I'm an angali, I'm an angali, I'm an angali. I am angeli of the oracle. 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 Angel of the oracle. Angel of the oracle. Stand to signify. Stand to signify. Stand to signify. 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 The word of Jesus. Even for you as an assembly, I'm angry from Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. 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 Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Open door. Open door. Open door. For our money, if you only a shindi allow vina is to open the open door. I bring open door. I get angoli angeli. Omi mozen do a kioli. Am prost vinongri angelio. 
I mean, I'm bringing, I'm bringing, I'm bring, I'm bring, I bring meal. I bring food. I bring meal. For la mi o koko livi na poporon vidi o koko chevuni. I mean, o koko chevuni e bi o vakafatenia. But you see, mon di akafi o din di kaparo vendi. O mi o koko kanga lo fi o dande. Holy nan dande. I mean, on bring and dande. I bring the meal of the day of the Father. I bring the meal of the day of the Father. I bring the meal of the day of the Father. For you see, you have prayed. You have prayed and you have waited on Jesus. You have prayed and you have waited on Jesus. You have aligned by the mercy of Jesus under the sheep shepherd. You have aligned under the sheep shepherd. Who bring intercession to the Father? Who bring intercession to the Father? Who talk to the Father concerning you as an assembly? Who talks to the Father concerning you as a company? And the Father have released the answer. I bring answer. I mean the bring answer. I bring answer to your prayers. I bring answer to the prayer of Jesus. For you see, there are prayers you can pray at your level. Jesus need to pray for you. So Jesus prayed for you. And the Father answered Jesus to fulfill, to fulfill, to fulfill his word, to fulfill his word, to fulfill his word, to fulfill his word. Therefore, I say, be expectant. Therefore, I say, be expectant. Therefore, I say, open your heart. Open your heart. Open your heart. Open your heart. I bring answer. I bring answer from Jesus. From an from Jesus. I'm Father Jesus. I'm my Father Jesus. Father Jesus. Father Jesus. Father Jesus. From Father Jesus. From Father Jesus. From Father Jesus. Father Jesus. Father Jesus. Father Jesus. Father Jesus is here. Father Jesus is here. Father Jesus is here. Father Jesus is here. Is here. Father Jesus is here. Father Jesus is here. Father Jesus is here. 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 Father Jesus is here. Father Jesus, 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 in the midst. Jesus is in the midst. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we welcome you. We welcome you. Son of God, I welcome you. I welcome you. Son of God, I welcome you. I bow before you. Jesus, I welcome you. I welcome you. Come. Take absolute control. Move among us by your spirit. Do what you desire to do, even in this assembly today. And throughout this meeting, we open up our hearts to you with much reverence and fear. And trembling in our hearts to you, Jesus. We ask, have your way unrestrictedly. Have your way, yeah, from beginning to the end of every session, have your way. Just have your way. And when we go home, have your way. Everywhere we are, have your way until we are fully baptized and immersed into your spirit. Even the spirit of the Father. Hey, have your way. Just have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Son of God. Son of God, have your way. I trust you today that I will, I will speak even as you have me speak. I, I align in my thoughts, in my heart, 
in every every faculty of my being lord i bring on the subjection to you our lord i ask that you will move me by your spirit inspire me cause me to speak as your oracle just help me today and i pray that you will help everyone to understand that everyone will key in no one will be left out Oh, Father, I pray that you, the atmosphere of the Spirit will cover us. You will envelop us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for your Son. I hear the Father is here, too. My Father is here, too. My Father is here, too. We are two. 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 Yeah, we are two. We are two. We are two. Two. Two manifestations. Two manifestations. Two manifestations. Two manifestations. Two manifesting as one. Two manifesting as one. Two being manifested as one. Two manifesting as one. Manifesting one thing. Manifesting this thing. Two manifesting. Two manifesting. To manifest him. We welcome. We welcome you, dear Lord. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Quickly, our Bibles to the book of first, uh, the book of John, the Gospel of John. We'll begin to just look at it. I, like I said, I've just tried to share the word in with us. There's so much spirit here. I pray I'll be able to coordinate the thoughts because when there is such anointing, there's a whole lot that comes with it. I pray that the Lord will help me. Amen. That's John chapter 14. We begin from John chapter 14. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So, oh, ho, 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 yeah, 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 Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are in that day. 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 That day, that very night, that I was betrayed, that I prayed to my father, that I prayed to my father, that I talk about my father, that I will come with my father, that I will come with my father. You are in that day. 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 I rejoice over you. I rejoice over you. For if you cause me to bring the day, I bring the day. That day, that day, that day, that day, that day, that day, in the agony of the sorrow of death, that day, that day I declared, and the night I was betrayed, 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 carrying the sorrow of death, carrying the will of the Father to the cross, you are in that day. You are in that day. You are in that day. I saw this day. I saw this day. I saw this day and I rejoice. And I rejoice. And I rejoice. I bring my father. I bring my father. I bring my father. And I'm a totoy, you know, 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 I come to change your season. 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 I come to change my dealings over you. I come to change the activities of the Spirit over you. Over you. Over you. Over you. Over you. Over you. The eternal Spirit is here. The eternal Spirit is here. I bring a foliar that I would not grow for. I the Father. I bring a new season. I bring fresh anointing. I bring a new season. I bring fresh anointing. See Jesus. Amen. Uh, chapter 14 from verse 26. We'll read a whole lot, but uh, let's begin from here. Just sharing the burden today. Um, chapter 26. It said, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. So here he was talking specifically about the Holy Spirit. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things. And bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. I like that. The Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. Uh, uh, looking at the, you know, the words that have been coming to us lately, you can understand when he was talking about the comforter here, it wasn't just talking about, yeah, the day of the, the day of Pentecost, the, the Holy Ghost did come. The Holy Ghost did come. But you see, the Holy Ghost uh, also still comes. Meaning, there are many comings that the Holy Ghost does. There are many comings that the Holy Ghost does. From the day of Pentecost, he came. The day of the Pentecost was like the landing of the Holy Spirit upon the earth. For prior to that time, the disciples have not had the Holy Ghost come upon them. And of course, we understand by teaching that uh, of the scriptures that in the Old Testament, we didn't have the Spirit come upon the people of Israel except for those who are given special tasks, like a prophet, um, judges, kings, and prophets, and the priests. They are the ones that have the spirit 
come upon them. Um, but in the New Testament, the privilege we have is that the Holy Spirit did come. Amen. The Holy Spirit did come and has come. But I'm trying to make you see that the Holy Spirit still comes. Now, please don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying come like the day he came in the day of Pentecost, which was like the, uh, if I use this word, the first advent of the Spirit upon uh, the, uh, upon the, the church, fulfilling that which Joel said, and it shall come to pass on the last day. So you can see that that's, that's, day the Holy Ghost came at the day of the Pentecost actually began the countdown what you call the last day began if you want to say the last day the last day is marked by the coming of the Holy Ghost um, last day of course, there are many explanations to the last days, you know. Uh, but the, 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 always understand that the last day is not just about the catastrophe. It's not just about the earthquakes and the shakings and all those things that will happen because they've happened on the earth even before then. Am I right? The earth was destroyed in the days of Noah, but that was not the last day. So what is he referring to when the scripture talks about the last day and the last day. The last day, most of the time we bring our mind or our mind is locked in to the occurrences, things that will happen, you know, especially when we read from the, even when we read from the scriptures, all our conclusion is the evil of the last day. But I want you to understand there are actually three days in all. There is a day of God. There is a day of the Son of God. And there is the day of the Spirit. The day of the Spirit, which is the third day, is actually what they call the last day. If, if we were to put it now, I know you say, okay, what are you trying to say? Are you saying that each of them have their own day? Yes. When you read Genesis, you will discover that the one that was being manifested or shown was God. That was the day of God. But did, was the Holy Ghost not there? He was there. Was the Word not there? He was there. Jesus was not uh, really made manifest, but he was there. He played a role. I don't know if you're understanding what I'm saying. But there came another day when the day of Christ will also come. And so these, these days... Uh, are actually what they mark, what they call the max, the last day. So the last day is the when we said what began the last day. When you say the last day, what began the last day, according to scriptures, is actually the when, the day when this very um, prophecy began its fulfillment. Now, it began, but it was not fully. In fact, that day, when they said, that when the day of Pentecost was fully come, now that fully come was counting according to the feasts. Not that the day of Pentecost was the full everything. No, that was not the everything. That was just the beginning of a day which you call the last day. Now, I want us to change our mind. When we begin to talk about the last day, let's talk about what God is doing, not what Satan is doing. That will enable our hearts position. We will position our hearts well to be able to receive because sometimes we can be so carried away by the things that are happening by the... Uh, you know, what is going on around the world, the diseases, the pestilence, the earthquakes, the whatever, and we neglect the very thing that the Lord is doing, 
The very thing that the Lord is doing is even more important. Why? Because those things have happened. They have gone through history, my dear, go through history. I'm a student of history, so I can tell you very well. Those things have happened. Are you talking about COVID? We've had worse than COVID in the history of mankind. We've had worse than COVID. So those things have happened. So it's not about those things. Those are not what Max... I know you say, but Timothy said in the last day, perilous time shall come. Yes! Yes! Perilous time shall come, but also it's also a time of glory. I, I, I love the way Isaiah balanced it. He said, arise and shine for your light is come. So in other words, it's a day of your light coming. It's a day of light. Even though it's a day of gloominess, it's a day of darkness, it's a day of tempest, it's a day when darkness will cover the earth and gross darkness, the face of the people, but it's also the day of glory. It's a day of glory. You, you can be so overtaken by the darkness and the things, the gloominess and all of that, and then you forget the fact that it is a day of glory. It is a day that God is manifesting his glory. It's a day that God is manifesting his glory. God wants to manifest his glory. Amen. God is manifesting his glory. It's a day of glory. It's a day of glory. Can you tell somebody it's a day of glory? It's a day of glory. It's a day of glory. Why? Because it's a day of manifestation of person. I love the way uh, uh, um, John put it here in verse 1. He says, he said, whom the Father will send in my name. Now, here, the Father is sending him. Now, the Father has sent him in the day of Pentecost, but not in this sense. Not in the sense, when we say, whom the Father will send in my name, so this sending has something to do with the name. I don't know if you 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 understand me. I know you you your Bible student. You will tell me, okay, uh, what it actually means. Whom the Father will send in my authority, or because I prayed? No. Yes, I know the Father sent him because he said, I will go to the Father and I will pray the Father, and he will send even the Comforter. Yes. In that sense, yes. But there is what it means to be sent in my name. To be sent in my name. The same way is applied when you say, we are two or three are gathered in my name. And of course you understand that it's not all the gathering of the saints that are gatherings in the name of the Lord. Uh, somebody said, are you saying they are not calling the name of Jesus? Yes, they are calling the name of Jesus. It's not just the calling of the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray. In the name of Jesus, we'll cast out demons. In the name of Jesus, we heal the sick. We do all of that. But when you say, in my name, is actually in my person. Whom the Father will send in my name. Like I said, it's the same thing when he said, we have two or three are gathered in my name. Meaning they are gathered in my person. They are gathered around my person. Why? Because it is in that day. Now, there's a need for that name because, you know, he's in the midst of that church. He will sing the praise. In the midst of the brethren, he would declare the name. He would declare the name. And for him to declare the name, the spirit has to be sent in his name. The Holy Ghost has to be sent in his name. 
that we need to understand that the Holy Ghost will do nothing, so will also Christ do nothing without the authorization of the throne. The throne has to authorize that something be done. What I mean, do something to bring in a person or the person of God is with the authority of God. Whom the Father will send in my name. The Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. Because he's not coming in the name of any other. He's coming in my name. Now, when, he's, when he comes in my name, what he simply is saying that he's coming to show my person. The Father will, will give authority for the Holy Ghost to show my person. You know, as a church, we can be together and authority has not been given by the throne for the show of a person. Of the Son or a person of the Father. We can be together and we will enjoy miracles. Have you been to miracle crusades before? Many, not many of us have experienced, have maybe experienced a little bit of the uh, move of the Spirit in the days of, uh, of healing, the evangelistic move of the, of the Holy Ghost on the church in Nigeria. There, there was a time like that. Amen. It, it was gracious. It was wonderful. It was a great time. Not many of us that are here alive, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about us young people that actually know what it was like. So you're in a new season. Uh, you, you might not be able to identify that with that, but I, I, I know that those, that those seasons, we are great seasons. Great seasons in what sense? It was a season of also the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit. Manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit. And also, manifestation of the gifts of Christ as in the fivefold ministry, especially the evangelistic ministry of Christ upon the church. And many we are reached. Many flocked into the church. Many came to know the Lord. Amen. Are you with me? Yes, sir. I am not. Don't tempt me to stand up, please, because I want to. On body, and I need to sit down to do that. If you make me stand up by you not being attentive, I will stand up because I know when I stand up, the, the message will stand up. <laughs> and if the message stands up, it won't teach, it will just preach and exalt. So please help me. Just be attentive. Our teaching spirit is always calmer than preaching. I enjoy preaching. It's sweet. Teaching you labor. Especially when you see the people's faces. I know in this meeting today, there, well, I was praying, I was praying through the night, I was praying through the night, I was praying, I was praying even yesterday. I knew that I could just test the atmosphere. I knew that there was there's so much expectation. There's so much expectation. I was just telling the Lord, I hope I'll be able to fit in into. A, 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 a line for you to meet there because I can meet your expectation. I don't have what it takes to meet your expectation. Look at your faces, you're looking for something. <laughs> you're looking for something where the way I'm looking at it. And if you're not getting that vibes, you are just wanting to doze off. Please don't doze off. Just you need to also labor with me. Amen. Amen. Are you ready to labor with me? Yes, I may tell us a bit of stories and all of that, but just to buttress the things I'm saying. Like I said, in, the, in those, in those uh, meetings that we, that, that we are then, it was also manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit, especially the gift of Christ with regards to the fivefold ministry, uh, evangelistic fivefold ministry. And a lot of people flocked to the church. A lot of people gave their lives to Christ. And the church was full. There was this, um, I don't know how to put it, there was this atmosphere and it was holy, it was, it, was, it, 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 it was sanctified, it was beautiful. It was a wonderful atmosphere uh, in those days, uh, especially when you sing 
I, uh, I, I made a bit of it. I was still young. I made, that's the last part of it. Some of us didn't even meet it at all. So one day, when we, when we were in crusade ground and you're singing, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Many of you don't know that song. There are many songs that I sing. I was just wondering, what is wrong with this? What is wrong with this generation? You don't know many songs. Hallelujah. 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 Now, if you had anything to do with that move, as we are singing this song, you will feel that anointing. You will feel that presence. The songs that came then carried something with them. Look and leave, my brother, leave. Look to Jesus Christ and leave. It is written dead in his word. Hallelujah, it is only that you look and live. Now, but this song was not talking about healing, but we use it for healing. Amen. Amen. And so many of such songs that, you know, came... Um, during that season, it was a season, a wonderful season, but it was not the season of giving of name. As wonderful as that season, now some of us that enjoyed it, some of the temptations we had was that we wanted such season to last. We wanted it to stay. We didn't know there'd be so, that God had something more. Something much more. In fact, we've not even begun. You know, we just thought that the, the atmosphere, the, you know, you finish, the, I used to remember we come back from crusade, you are, you are still with the presence, you will pray, you will pray, you will study your Bible. There's this consecration that that atmosphere just bettered in your soul and, and then, but lo and behold, it does not last. Wasn't it the Holy Ghost? It was the Holy Ghost. Was it to do something? Yes. It was to stir up hunger. It was to stir up hunger in your soul for something. But we carry that atmosphere and of course it did a whole, quite a whole lot for us. But one of the things that I want to say is that it did not register a person in our soul. And that was the reason why such atmosphere don't stay too long. So after a while, we now have a lot of people in the church. Because the Holy Ghost will change gear. And for your information, he's not going to wait for all of the churches to key into the nest. He has he has a program he's running. You see, when Jesus was here on earth, he, had, he knew he had 33 years, and all he was doing was to follow it accordingly. He was racing to make sure he finishes the same thing with the Holy Ghost. Wow. He wouldn't wait for, you know, for the whole church. Like Jesus didn't wait for all the believers to believe, all those who are going to believe to believe. Once he got his 12, that was all. He knew the job was done. But with that 12, he had to pay attention to them until he had been able to, you know, uh, 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 give them something. He gave them something. There was something he gave them. And then he was sure that when he was praying in 17, he said, I have kept them in thy name. 
So it means that he had already begun to do something about the name. So the disciples, when you're seeing the disciples, we, we might look at them and say they are apostles of the Lamb. They only testified about the rest, you know, the, the physical ministry of the Lord. That is the, the earthly ministry of the Lord. No, there was something they had. They had bishopric. Bishopric is not something in, small in the spirit. They had bishopric. Another place, he said, those of you who have followed me in the, day of my, in the days of my temptation, I appoint unto you kingdom. Meaning they had entrance. That was actually when they appointed them for the foundation of the New Jerusalem, the city. The foundation of the walls of the city. It was there, there, here, why, why they were here. That was when they were, those things were appointed to them. And, you know, so you can see that they were not, even though we say, okay, yeah, the first thing they began to teach was Jesus of Nazareth. But in their soul, covenants have been caught. Initiations have taken place. They might not, it might not be given to them to preach, but they had something in their heart already. That was why when Paul came and started preaching, they can recognize that Paul met Jesus. If they didn't hear Jesus, they may not have said all that Jesus said, but when they heard Paul, they knew you were with Jesus. When Paul said, Jesus appeared to me. Now, you know, many people say, Jesus appeared to me. We want to hear what did he tell you. He showed me what is going to happen in 2029, 2030. That is great. But if Jesus is going to appear to me, I want him to teach me Bible. If he tells me what is going to happen in 2029, It's good if he tells me, if he tells me it's my purpose, right? But that will not solve the problem. It is the giving of himself that will solve the problem. Amen. So like I said, now we had all of those wonderful moves, but we did not have the, it wasn't, the coming or being sent in my name. That is what it means to be sent in my name. I'm going to try to crash everything together because uh, by next Sunday we're going to have another minister and then all up and up like that. So if I'm going to come at all, it might just be to, you know, just give a charge for them. So I'm going to just try and crash these bodies together. So that's what it means to be sent in my name. So I can truly tell you that the, the move that we have, we, we are used to, our, we all the generation, we are used to, was not a move of the Holy Ghost sent in the name of the Lord. Now when we now began to see this is when there is a move of the Holy Ghost to give or declare the name or give the name. Now, please understand me. I'm teaching. Uh, I, I know what I'm teaching also. Scriptures will be running through your mind. Um, even when you read that scripture, when he said, go make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son. And of the Holy Ghost. Now, that when you hear the name of the Holy Ghost, is a person. Is still a person. Names are attached to persons. Names are given to persons. 
So I say in the name of the Holy, in the name of baptizing them in the name of the Holy Ghost. The name of the Holy Ghost is not necessarily the healing and the being filled with the Holy Ghost and all of that. Those things will still continue. How many of us will know they still continue and they are wonderful? But the name of the Holy Ghost is actually the person of Jesus. Because there was a person called Jesus. We don't know much about that person called Jesus. What we know is the miracles that surrounded him. But there was a person called Jesus. The person that God made him or God manifested to him at the age. I want to call it by the age of 12. To... Probably sometime 27, if you listen to our daddy teach it, you, uh, I, and I agree with that, maybe around 27, amen, praise God. Because the last, uh, let's say 28, 29, 30 was the, the uh, because there has to be seven more years. I don't know if you're following what I'm saying. Three and a half, three and a half. So he began to do everlasting that's finished Jesus. In fact, what he was doing with that 20 from that, uh, let's say, from that, from that 12, that 12, what, what you are seeing was Jesus already. That was Jesus. That was Jesus. The Bible called him the child Jesus. That was Jesus. That was a, a person. That was still a person. But by the time he's getting to this 20 and above, that was Christ. Before he came to Jordan, he had begun the curriculum, fulfilling the commandments and obedience of everlasting life. He had already started it. He didn't start it in the day of the baptism. He had started it earlier. You know how I know? He had pleased the Father. This is my beloved Son. The Son. It is a Son. This is my beloved Son. So the beloved Son began from the beginning. Please, you need to understand this. Don't tell me what is all this. What does it mean? It means something. Is applicable to your life. You must live according to the book. And there is no way you live according to the book if they are not declared to you. You will live according to another book. Books we are open. Books we are open. And men we are judged according to the books. So your life is a book. So don't say, what, what does this mean? How does it apply to me? No, it applies to you. It needs to be declared. When is the, it's only when it's... The, you know the declaration, there's a way it corrects our life. So it corrects us. Yeah, it begins to correct our mindset. Corrects us. So it means something. So if we say, this is my beloved son. Can you say beloved son? Beloved. Yeah, beloved son actually started... From is the father declaring, This is my beloved son. This is my beloved son. So, what you're seeing is that this is a son that the father has already, as it we are adopted. So, that was the beginning of the son of God who is the everlasting son. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So you can see that there are, his life is a book. So there was Jesus. Jesus is a person. Jesus is what? Is a person. Is Jesus that became Christ. So to become Christ was a transition 
by obedience to the point where he could become Christ. Meaning, from Jesus, he assessed the anointed life. That's what is called the anointed, that's the Christos, is an anointed life. Is an anointed life how a man ought to live here on earth. You can't live with a dry head. You, you, need to be, you need to leave being anointed, otherwise Satan will trap you. David sang a song concerning Saul. He said, how the mighty has fallen. Then he said, Saul and Jonathan has fallen upon the mat as if they were not anointed. Meaning somewhere they missed that anointed life. Meaning they were supposed to live under the anointing. They were supposed to live. When you say un live under the anointing, it's not oil dripping from your head all the time. Maybe pour Goya olive oil and then it's dripping and it's just anointed life. No. It's a manner of life. It's a manner of life. That manner of life is taught. That manner of life is also a name. That name is to manifest a person. Now, when you live like that, that when you live like that, you, you will escape Satan. If you don't live like that, you will constantly fall into his trap. Anointed life is a lifestyle. Is a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle that if Christ is not well taught, men will not be initiated into it. So you need a whole lot of teaching of Christ to initiate men into that anointed life. That anointed life is also, I will put it this way, is a walk. Is a walk that has to be wrought in you. Is a walking that has to be, is like engine inside of you. Working to please God in a particular way. So you're, you're working. You're not, just, you're not just living flat. If I use this word, don't misunderstand it now. You're not living without a purpose. Now there are many purposes under the sun. So I'm not just talking about when you hear you're not living uh, uh, without a purpose. Somebody who... who Life's purpose driven life will say, Yeah, now no, you're talking yeah, because we are supposed to be here for it. No, I'm talking about divine purpose. You're living for a purpose. Ah, I'm not living for any purpose under the sun. If you're living for a purpose under the sun, it means you've not found Christ. You've not found Christ. You've not found Christ. If you find Christ, you will, it will halt every other purpose purpose and then redirect you to begin to live for the purpose of heaven and when you begin to live for the purpose of heaven somebody will see you and say you are wasting your time you are not living for anything but you're simply because you're living for what is not seen Men want to see their purpose and they live for it. But we, it is not, we live by what is not seen. That is purpose. In fact, the, to, to be candid with you, Christ's life is a life where you live and you are living by what is not seen. Like, Pastor was talking about that was Christ's life. You are you, you are describing. You live with. How can somebody work for 14, 15, 16 years, and then you don't have savings? You work as a manager of telecommunication company, and you're coming out without a plan. I'm sure if the elders of your village sit you down, they will talk sense into your head. 
that that is not in fact when they, are you are you a man you know when they say are you a man are you are you not a man that's what they mean by a man but we are not that kind of man because for them the understanding of a man is understanding of a mere man You know, Satan can preach with anybody. So even when they call you and they say they're advising you, he's preaching. Just understand, he's pre- they're just preaching to you. <laughs> and if you're not careful, if you're not careful, if you're not anointed, it only take... Because they also called me like that to preach to me. But the anointing was just so much. It was like a force field around about my head that it was knocking off everything that anybody was saying, I had, I had people who called me to advise. I even had deacons of the church that I was worshipping in. That was the days when we were young, you know, going for crusade from here and there. You know, just going, we are just going for crusade. One day, one of the deacons, out of love, but lo and behold, he was preaching. You know, they can't love you better than what they have inside. So if a man has this world inside, he will love you with this world. But if you have truth inside, you will love with truth. So he called me one of those days and asked me. He knew I was standing in the place of the first son in my family. And he called me one day and asked me, isn't this crusade you're going to from here to there and there? Is that how you're going to take care of your younger ones? No, you know those things are preaching. You know that Satan knows how to preach. I've never seen a preacher. We don't even have a trance. He can anoint somebody and he can say a few words, but that thing will be a dart in your soul that will not leave you it will only take mercy you will go home thinking about it and then you would know when you will begin to change course change direction so they called me then and then he, 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 told, he was a dickin and then ask me that question. Certainly, I did not know what to answer. But I know one thing. I was ghosted. So everything he said dropped there. He didn't leave that place with me. How anybody was going to be taken care of is not my business. I didn't even have the light I have right now. But I know that everybody will be taken care of. But I, like I always say that, people will be taken care of. Amen. If I share with, with, with you some of my, some of my experiences as, as, as a minister of the gospel, you will, some of you might run. Challenges. Financial challenges. Needs. And all of that. And... Let me share this with you. It might help somebody so that you can follow the anointed life and not listen to what Satan is saying. Because sometimes he will just fire you with those things so that you will drop faith. You will drop, you will drop, you can drop Christ. You can drop following Christ. And then if you don't, if you, if, if you're not able to be consistent with Christ, you can't, you can't, you can't hold the mystery. If you can't hold the mystery of faith, the mystery of faith is the life of faith. Holding it with a pure conscience. How will you now hold the mystery of the Father? I used to tell some of the people that I counsel, that is, young people who are starting off in marriage. I told them, I said, look, you have to play it according to the book. I gave them, I, I, I gave them a little bit of my uh, experience. Well, as, as a minister of the gospel, um, after I got married, of course, we got married and, you know, as a minister, young minister, Practically any nothing but just preaching here and there, anywhere that there is preaching, and you know, they give you offering. And those days, offerings we are. <laughs> and some places they will not give you offering. I remember one, 
one pastor that invited me, I won't mention his name. I went two places like that, they did that to me. One was the one that I and Pastor Tayo went for. Pastor Tayo will remember that. I had just preached in church, sweating, and then very tired. And then the meeting was afternoon. So I finished, I drove down, I met Pastor Tayo, we went together, and I was, I was preaching. What was, what was the topic? I can't remember the topic. And those days we are very, very quick to share Christ, you know, faith of the Son. Then I, I finished preaching, and I was hungry because I had not eaten. I was thirsty. They didn't give me water. They just, and the person I was talking about was his boss. Who had a church that he was pastoring? Was his boss in telecommunication company? He just shook my hand and gave me one book. <laughs> you remember the book? <laughs> Guess the book. You've heard me say, some of my pastors have heard me. He gave me a book. Because I was teaching about the sufferings of Christ, the, the revelations of the faith of the Son of God, the sufferings of Christ. When I finished, he shook me and gave me rich dad, poor dad. <laughs> I was, I wasn't, I wasn't angry. To be candid with you, my heart was totally because had, we've already been trained to minister not expecting anything. So it didn't matter to me. I am Pastor Tyre with just, I didn't even have money. It was Pastor Tyre that had to buy Coke and, uh, and egg roll and we shared it and ate <laughs> and, and went home. Amen. Praise God. So I've had many instances like that, but this particular one, he invited me. I came all the way. I used my last card, my last money, to transport myself to his church, and then I finished preaching. I didn't have a card then. I finished preaching, and I needed to go back. Normally, as a minister, I was expecting, okay, even if they give me an honorarium, no matter how much, at least I'll use it to transport myself back. I've had many. I can't begin to count all of them, but this particular one, I just want to, you know, make reference to it. So, I finished preaching. He just took me to where I will enter bike and just shook me. I said, thank you, sir. We'll see you again. <laughs> Amen. So, I, I didn't know what to say. I don't know. Maybe the Lord touched him the second time. And I now asked the bike guy, uh, how much is the bike money? He told him, so he re removed money and paid for the bike. That was all. And I just drove. I thank God that I was able to get home that very day. <laughs> so, just talking about that, I, I, let me share this because I just feel like I need to share it because I don't want you to be weary and faint in your heart because of the part of the anointed, the part of Christ, which Pastor Tario began to talk about. I had a season in my life after we got married, you know, we had a lot, and then there was this season where I couldn't, just shortly after we get, got married, I had the widow, I have, uh, then I had, my mother has gone to be with the Lord, I had a widowed mother whom, of course, I was the only son that could probably provide for her, and I couldn't, because it was not just there, it was, my heart was always, and sometimes my heart would be, one day the Lord stopped me, I'm, to, I'm just saying that to correct something, now when you have, you give. You honor your parents. You know I teach you that, right? Many of you young people, you know when you get your salary, once you start working, 
And I, I tell you, certain amount of that money designates certain amount of money that should go to your parents regularly. Every month. Don't miss it. Don't eat it. Don't eat all of it. Pay your tithe, give your offering, do charity, but part of the commandment, part of honoring them, is that something must go. You must say, oh, they don't need it, they are rich. Obey the Lord. It's not about whether they are rich or they are poor. They didn't, they didn't give that commandment because they were rich or they were poor. No, it's for your sake. Amen. But there was that season when I couldn't do that. Because I wasn't really earning anything as it were. And so sometimes I'm troubled. And one day the Lord told me, he said, you know she is my daughter. You think I can't take care of her? You're not the one that will take care of her? You can take care of her. I will take care of her. He said, just relax. Do the work I've sent you. Follow me. I will take care of her. And truly, I can testify the Lord did. The Lord did very well. Marvelously. Marvelously. Uh, at times, I couldn't send her anything, but people were sending her money. Buying her gifts. While I'm here, now, we'll be here, she will buy things sent to us. And when I'm seeing those things, my heart is is sorrowful that I couldn't give up, but she is thinking of, so each time we, you know, yeah, she says she's thinking of us, how we are doing. Now, me, meanwhile, I was troubling myself. You know, that, that thing alone can make me too forsake. The, the direction of life, the way the Lord was leading me, that thing alone could, can make a young man Especially when they talk to you. There's a way they will talk. Some people will talk to you. You will just forget about this anointing. You know, I've had those days when we are young. That was when we, we treasured the anointing so much. But we got some of friends. Friends who we were also together will tell you that anointing without money is annoyance. <laughs> anointing without money equals annoyance. Amen. I don't know where guys are bold though. Where do you get that kind of definition? Amen. But like I said, back to the teaching because you know a whole lot can just open up like that and you'll be going. Um, we had a lot of people come to church. We had a lot of people, you know, influx of people in the church. But it was not the season of giving of person. Or it, it wasn't that the Lord did not want to give persons, but the church wasn't ready yet. The church wasn't ready yet for to receive the person of the Lord. You know, he would tell them, a little while the world will not see me. No, he said... I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. A little while you will not see me. A little while you will see me again. Those were are very, very technical words. He was talking basically about the bringing of his person. His revelation. His revelation. You will see me again. But not the way, of course, that you're seeing me physically. They were seeing him physically, but they were not seeing him because they are seeing him physically. They were not seeing the person that he is. And so he wanted to say a whole lot to them about it. But he said, many things I would have loved to say to you, but you can't bear them. You can't take them. But how did when the comforter is come? He will remind you of the things which I have said. He will not only remind you of the things which I have said. He will also show you things to come. He will take of mine. That's where I'm going to. He will take of mine. There is that which is mine. What is mine? What does the Lord own? 
what is his? His are the person that is in him. That is what he owns. If, you're, if what you own is only external, you, are, you own nothing. Let me not say it the way you will not like it. You own nothing. If all you own is outside, you own nothing. Amen. Amen. You, you, think, you think God... God is God because he created heaven and earth. He made the universe, created the things that I need. Now those are just expressions. Those are just his expressions. They are not really who he is. Of course you know that. They are not really who he is. So he is God. God is God because of his person. So he is rich because in himself he is rich. God, look at the things that they mentioned. God, but God who is rich in mercy. Mercy is the things that I stand out. But God who is rich in grace. The riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. So riches are things in. Riches in. Riches are things inward. Riches are inside. Things on the inside, they're actually what makes a man rich. You can be rich towards God, but you can also be rich negatively. Amen. 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 So let's, let's go back. Whom the Father will send in my name. In my name. The Father will send him in my name. Now, the church will not be, I want to use the orthodox word, will not be, conf you know when you, those days I attended a little bit of block rosary, that you do block rosary and then I've, I've, I've done many things when I was, Young, so I, I had I had Catholic neighbors. They used to have uh, block rosary, so we attend block rosary all the time, where we read uh, all of that. And then they, you you go, you go for the, there's what they call catechism. Then after that, you now go for confirmation. Now there's what they call confirmation. Amen. Amen. I don't know where they took it from, but I know it's in the scripture. Amen. There is confirmation. Not confirmation in the sense that they taught it. Paul mentioned it. Christ has to be confirmed in you. Now, the church will not be confirmed. Meaning the church will not come to a form. Or be firm. Without the revelation of a person. What will make the church come to a form is that a person is given. And the person here we are talking about is the Father. So when Jesus was saying, whom the Father will send in my name, Jesus himself at that point has already inherited the name of the Father. I pray that God will open this for us and make us have entrance. Yeah. I tell you, the church that will break into it, things will change. There are many things he said about that. He said, he told oh, have you asked nothing in my name? Which name? There is a name. So in that day, Now, I, I even love this, the way he wrote it. He told all, have ye asked nothing? So what are, we supposed, what are we supposed to be asking? You know, he, he told all, have you asked nothing in my name? You're thinking of things external. No. What you ask are things in my name. 
Meaning up till now, you've not asked anything according to the revelation of my name. The revelation of my person. So you're supposed to ask according to. Now, not ask things external. Not ask for car, ask for money, ask for any other thing. Ask me things concerning me. Things that makes me up. He tapped to, have you not asked? Because you can ask when you don't have revelation of what to ask for. But when the revelation of what to ask for comes, you should begin to ask for in my name. Now, there is something tied to that name. And ye shall receive that your joy might be full. So if what he's talking about here are things external, I can tell you, how many of you have asked something external? Maybe you asked for school fees, you asked for change of wardrobe, you asked for some shoes, you've asked for, you asked for that, and, 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 and heaven provides it. You asked for a car, and the car comes, and Maybe a week, two weeks time, somebody scratches it. Somebody scratch your joy. <laughs> Amen. So you can see that he wasn't talking about such things. What he was saying, he told to have you ask nothing. So ask something. Ask for something. The things you will ask for are the things of his person. Because they are the things that makes for your joy to be full. Now this actually is 16, 14. In fact, the whole of John, let me just say, the whole of John was about everlasting. The gospel of John was about everlasting life. Meaning that, that was the season of the Father. That was the season. Amen. Amen. That was the season of the mystery of the Father. And so, here, when he was talking about ask in my name, is ask according to the revelation of my person that I have received from my father. Ask, for, ask me for such things. Ask me for such things. When you ask me for such things, you will receive. And your joy. Your joy. That your joy may be full. That your joy may be full. Now the same thing. This is have I written unto you. That your joy may be full. So the things you are asking are the things that are written unto you. Are you seeing it now? The things that you are asking, which you now have to ask, are the things that will make your joy to be full. And because you've asked, it will now be written unto you. Now, your joy to be full means to come into the life everlasting or the life of the Father. Your joy. Your joy is your strength, I know. But your joy is also your life. Meaning you've not, the level of life you have, you need things. You need revelation of my person to cap it up. To come into fullness of joy. You need to come into fullness of joy. So you ask. Amen. Amen. And so many other scriptures like that that he began to talk about are here of things to ask. Now these things are things that has to do with his name. You know, have we asked, of course, I know here we do that, ask, Father, declare your name in the midst of the brethren. We want your revelation. 
I remember the first time we began to pray prayers like this. It, it looked so dry. That was then in full restoration as a pastor. That's uh, um, one of the pastors, assistant pastors. And, and you know, my pastor was a pastor. That's a Reverend Oku who has gone to be with the Lord. Was a searcher. He was a seeker. That's why immediately he saw our daddy Reverend. He just, in fact, he colonized him. When he was here in Nigeria, no other minister had access to Reverend like him. And Reverend was such a wonderful man that if you are drinking milk and you invite him, he will minister milk to you. Many churches invited him. He would just minister at their level. But it was only my pastor that will not allow him minister like that. He will give him a topic. <laughs> and the topic he was giving to him was not my turn to shine. <laughs> or settle me, O oh Lord. No. <laughs> some, of the, some of the meetings we had, had then... You will not believe the topic. I don't even have the stature to begin to put such topic. I remember we had one. We had, there was a particular year we had, every month we had program with Reverend. And each of them had terrible names, terrible team. There was one called Eternal Church. That was in the 90s. The eternal church. Church of the firstborn, you know. Those things, those are the kind of, the seven trumpets. The seals, the seven seals. Those are the kind of meetings we had with Reverend. He was the only one who was able to poke. And then, Reverend was wise, he was hiding those things. He didn't want to bring them out because he wasn't too sure of the kind of, of course, when, you, when he came to Lagos, the kind of ministers that we are here, we are ministers who are ready to merchandise anything. You remember the one that daddy talked about? The guys that we are carrying his Bible, fixing meetings for him, so that they will share on radio. I know them, because I was also, you know, their friends, and I was wondering, and, and but the thing about you, Reverend didn't pursue them. And I was wondering, why, why? Is he living? He knows, he knows these guys. But well, you know, Reverend has a very large heart. He won't pursue you, but the message will pursue you. <laughs> so after a while, they, when they now began to hear some other teachings, they, they all took off. They got offended with him and then took off. They stopped arranging meetings for him because they were not sure what he's going to teach in that church. You know, there are some messages you teach after teaching, they won't give you anything. Anything. So you are preaching suffering, go and suffer. <laughs> Amen. So, he, I remember one time he was just, that was within the season, it was within that season that, okay, we met Reverend, he was just making friends with Reverend, bringing Reverend from time to time, and then, but he was still praying, he wanted, he wanted God to give us something definite, something reassuring, a direction. So one day, he, he, he called us, he said, we are going to have um, night vigil, series of night vigil, we are going to be praying for one, uh, he, he, we are going to be praying for something, that there's something in his heart he feels we need to, he didn't know, but the, mo, the best we knew then, because even though we are listening to Reverend, we still attended, you know, uh, programs like uh, held by Wolf B and the rest of them, and then by the time you go to such meetings and they finish talking to you, you just feel that you're not doing ministry, you're not doing ministry, what you're doing, you're playing. Let me not get into that. But that was when I respected our daddy reverend. He was not moved. He was not moved. After a while, all the ministers that knew him, that used to invite him, stopped inviting him. But he was not moved. He was not moved. So, my pastor now said we are going to pray that the Lord has to really show us 
what he wants us to, the direction he wants us to follow. So the first prayer, uh, prayers we had, it was in IBG, we finished praying. Then, the next day, he met me, he said, God has told him that when we gather, we should pray for light. <laughs> That when we gather for a night vigil, we should pray for light. Not neighbor light. <laughs> that we should pray for understanding. That was strange, my brother. That was strange in that season. That was strange in the 90s. That was not a song the church was singing. You pray for light. Meaning pray for understanding. Pray for the knowledge of God to break forth in your midst. And so we started praying. When we started praying those prayer, it was dry. Dry. You know, the other time when we gather together, we pray, we bind, we cast, we bulldoze, we, we uproot, we plant, we do all kinds of things. We pray that God will bring this ministry to a limelight. You know, all kinds of things we prayed for. But then he now said we should be praying for light. It was difficult. It was dry. But I was actually praying for the manifestation of the name. Now the Holy Ghost won't come in this sense. When there is no person to manifest. He won't come if there is no person to manifest. What we are talking about here in this John 14, 15, 16, we are, talking, we are not talking about the Holy Ghost in the day of Pentecost. We are talking about the Holy Ghost coming to manifest, to show Christ. Now why? It's also in John. Let's, let's look at John Let's look at 15, because we are in 14, 15, uh, 15, 16, we'll just be uh, throwing ourselves through it, 15, I love 15, verse 26 also, but when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, now understand that Anything that you say is coming from the Father has to bear witness to the Father. Anything that is coming from the Father has to bear witness to the Father. If it is not, you can't really say it's from the Father if it is not bearing witness to the Father. Amen. That I will send to you, unto you, from the Father even the spirit of truth. So you can know how he is not just the Holy Ghost now. He called him the spirit of truth. First of all, he called him comforter. Then he now called him the spirit of truth. Even the spirit of truth, which? Can we read it together? And I'm not hearing you. Are you seeing it? He is to bear witness to the Father. Why? Because he proceeded from the Father. Even as our Lord Jesus Christ, no one has seen the Father at any time, but the only begotten Son who is in the bosom. Now in another place he said, says thou to the person whom God has sanctified and brought into the world that because I said I am the son of God and you say it's blasphemy. Now because he proceeded from the father he proceeded I don't know whether you understand me get this. The Holy Ghost did what? Proceeded. In the same sense that Jesus also proceeded. So how we know where you came from is what you speak. So how we know what the, 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 because what they speak, they testify of 
a place. They testify. When I say a place now, I'm talking about a person. And what they bear as testimony are things that will take you to that place. If you will hear that report or receive that testimony, you will also, because he had prayed, I pray for these ones that you have given to me, that where I am, they, there they may also be. Have you ever considered that? Was he talking about heaven? Meaning there's a place where he is. He is a child of the bosom. He is in the bosom. Now, how do we know that? He said, the Father that dwelleth in me. The Father dwells in me. Amen. Amen. The Father dwells in me. The Father is dwelling in me. Meaning, I have become a habitation of the Father. I have become a habitation of God. God is inhabiting me. My father that dwelleth in me is the one that doeth the works. You see that in, 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 in that gospel of John. John, you know, um, chapter, same place where we read, uh, chapter 14, verse 11. He said, believe me that I am in the father and the father is in me. Wow, this is a mystery. This is a mystery I want to be fulfilled in my life. I don't know about you. This is a mystery I want to be fulfilled in my life. That I am in the Father and the Father is in me. My brother, that is joy made full. That is joy made full. That I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But verse 10 said, Believest not that, not that, believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me, the words that I speak. What happened? I'm not hearing you. So when you are, when you proceed from the Father, you can't speak of yourself. If you're speaking of yourself, it means you, you, are not, you are not coming from the Father. You don't get what I'm saying. They are from the world, therefore the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world hears them. Are you seeing it? A man, how you know a man is what he speaks, where he is from. Where do you come from? You know, it's not difficult to know a Nigerian when you meet a Nigerian outside the country. Am I saying the truth? Very, very easy. Once you see a Nigerian, you can see another black man, either from South Africa, from Kenya, from any of them. You, you will, but once you see a Niger boy, Kai, there's just something about Niger boy. It's not even our broken. There's, there's a way we, our courage. The, that, no, speaking, you're speaking. You're speaking of where you came from. There, there's a way your manner of life. And, and you know, there, there's this confidence Nigerians have. I used to wonder, your country is not even good, but you just carry yourself as if you... He's a Nigerian that will not allow a white man to put him down. I'm telling you the truth. Other African, black African countries, they don't even know. They are, I thank God for their meekness. <laughs> but Nigerians are cocky. We are cocky. The way, if you meet them at shopping mall, you will know. You will know. You will meet, you meet them, you will just know that this one is a Nigerian. What are, what are they doing? They are speaking of where they came from. Are you understanding me now? You speak of where you came from. So when a man is speaking of this world, it's because he's from the world. Or they are of the world. And the world hears them. But I love this place. 
Believers thou know that I am in the Father and the Father in me. The words I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. I speak meaning I've lost myself. I've lost myself. I, I can't speak of myself. So anywhere we are still, I am still speaking of myself means I have not yet, I'm not yet in the Father. That's one thing the Father will do to you. He will shred that thing called self out of you. You will not speak of yourself. You can't speak of yourself. Meaning you won't to speak of yourself, first of all, is to speak of this world. Uh, somebody saying, is this world myself? Yes! Yes! You're looking at this world by reason of things outside. It's not things outside. Is it you? Is that thing called self is of this world. Amen. But the Father that dwelleth in me. Can you say the Father that dwelleth in me? <laughs> now, if the Father is dwelling in me, means I have become a habitation. I've become his habitation. The Father is dwelling in me. But how is the Father dwelling in me? Ephesians. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians 2, 22. I'll just, these scriptures, I'll just use it to tie it down. And then uh, maybe next Sunday... If I'm not able to, I'm not, I'm, certainly I will not be able to say all the burden, but we'll continue next Sunday and we are going to be having a, another minister coming to minister to us. Amen. Amen. 22, look at it. Now this is a habitation. Amen. Meaning the Father has found an habitation. The Father has found what? An habitation. In whom ye also are built together. For what? Habitation of who? I'm not hearing you. Habitation of God through the Spirit. Habitation of God through the Spirit. So in other words, we are being built to habitate God. Don't let your building carry to let. <laughs> to let, most of the time, is because the building is not so comfortable. And the person who was there packed out. And then it is to let. Because when you see a goodly house, it's always not to let. Am I saying the truth? Sunday, am I saying the truth? He's into real estate. Am I saying the truth? When you see a fine house that is well built and everything is okay, you hardly see to let. Some of my children, they are looking for a house. They will see one before they go. It's taken. We are just thinking, okay, maybe can you price it down a little bit? Somebody has taken it. Why? Because when it's good. But when your house carries to let for long, you need a bit of renovation. They need to renovate you. So come to Christ for renovation. They need to renovate your soul. Meaning they need to remove some things. And then plaster your wall. Screed it. Maybe your wall is rough. Your floor needs to be tired. Pastor, you is looking at me. He understands my language. Some of you don't. You need to do POP. Amen. Make the place look fine. Now, I want to ask you a question. You know how to make your place look fine. Where you want to dwell. And you want to give God something that is not fine to dwell in. If you being man know how to build a goodly house, how much more God? 
for God to put his house in order, he has to come with gold. He has to come with silver. The silver and the gold is what? It's mine. He said, I will, the silver and the gold that will be used to build this latter house. Because the glory of the latter house will be greater than the former. The glory of the latter house, what will make the glory of the latter house greater than the former? Simply is the house of the father. The father's plan is not to go again. I will come with my father and we will make our abode in you. We will make our abode in you. Wow. So, God's intention is to make us a habitation. Now, a habitation through the Spirit. Through the Spirit. Amen. A habitation of God through the Spirit. Meaning, God wants to inhabit us. Through the Spirit. I will explain that. Let's look at um, maybe John chapter, chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. Amen. 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 I, I, are you being blessed? Yes, sir. I just knew I had to teach. I'm not going to just do exaltation. I needed to teach. Sit down and teach. Because I want you to understand this. First John chapter 4, give me 13. Amen. Now, I want us to read this 13 together. Want to go? So, what has he given us? And that is how we know Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us. Because he has, well, so what did he give to us? Of his spirit. Here, he wasn't talking about new birth. There's a sense to which the Holy Ghost is dwelling in us. In our spirit, at the new birth, which is totally different from what they are talking about here. I will explain. I think it was on Tuesday, Daddy was teaching. I was listening to the teaching. He made, some, he made mention of something that just, you know, just... Psh, Blew my mind, opened my eyes. Of course, it has to do with these things we are talking about. It was talking about the, the spirit. Because that was the discussion we've been having through the, the week of, uh, of writing the vision and also afterwards. So he, he, made state, he, he was also teaching about the spirit and then said that the Holy Ghost. Can you say Holy Ghost? Ah, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost is wonderful. No wonder they, they said if, if you blaspheme against the Son, you'll be forgiven. But if you blaspheme against the Holy Ghost, you will not be forgiven. There's something about the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost is Kai. He said something that excited me. My, 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 my inside just vibra revibrated. He said the Holy Ghost is the sorrow gate. Of God. You know, what, you know what I mean by surrogacy? We have surrogate mothers. You take a seed and implant into the womb of another woman and it carries it to town. Kai. Woo! My mama. <laughs> I just said it now. I just feel the anointing of the spirit so much. Because these things are true. These things are true. 
The Holy Ghost is the womb of the morning. When you say womb, among the Godhead, he is the one that has, he is the one that has womb. And that's why he is the one that gave birth to you. When you say new birth, now Holy Ghost. But that's not the only birth. He has many bad things to do. Many bad things to do. He has to bet you into Christ. And bet you into the Father. He's bad. So with him are bad processes. Bad pangs. They are with him. When a woman is going through all those things, you're just demonstrating all. Is a woman that can endure the childishness, the folly of a child. Amen. Amen. <laughs> it's only a woman that can endure the, the folly of a child. We fathers... You know now. <laughs> Amen. I'm saying this. My son is looking at me. He's there. He understands what I'm saying. Very well. Very, very much. Joel, just bear with me a little bit, all right? It's so that you will grow to become a man. Yes, you have to grow to become a man. And, you know, at a point, you know, raising him, my wife will take everything. In fact, sometimes when I want to, I will be prevented. I won't fight. I will just wait. Because there is an appointed time. I'm waiting for my appointed time. Because you will not inherit a person without me dealing with you. So the Holy Ghost, you see, that's the Holy Ghost you're seeing that is pampering the newborn baby spiritually. <laughs> when it is time for Christ to be born in your soul, you will understand that the Holy Ghost can be tough. He changes operation. All those goosebumps and anointing and all of that that you used to feel, and you feel, I feel, you know, it's just a feel the Holy Ghost. Shh. Shh. All of those things will just instructions. Do this. Walk in love towards this person. Forgive that person. What you heard the preacher preach, now this is how it's applicable to you. He begins to correct all of that. Now, you see that process, what he is doing is that he is incubating you. This is how it is. Because sin also gives birth. The Bible says when sin is conceived, so what is the sin that is conceived? Is the corruptible seed. It can be conceived in your soul. So the Holy Ghost is the one also who brings about the, not just the conception of the incorruptible seed, which is the mystery of the Father. What I'm saying is that he is the one that demonstrates it. You, you, you are talking about Christ is the one that will bear witness to Christ. When the Holy Ghost is bearing witness to Christ, you think that is all that he can do. But he can do more than that. Give him anything, he will carry it to terms. To full term, 
And he, when, he gives it, when he gives birth to it, or gives birth to you, you will look exactly. If you can allow the Holy Ghost carry you in the womb fully in the season of Christ, and you don't struggle to come out, because sometimes we struggle and come out before the time. Some of you come out tri three, you know, you're supposed to have a trimester. You come out first trimester. You are not, you can't survive. You come out second trimester, you are, they, are, they are trying to salvage you. You need to wait and come out fully matured. The Holy Ghost can carry you. How? Through the training. What he's going to do? He's the one that will manifest. He will manifest. He's the one that will manifest. You can't know Christ. Let me say Christ is the Holy Ghost that will show you Christ. You can't know the Father Without the Holy Ghost, he's the one that will show you the things of the Father. That's what Jesus was saying, that he will take of mine. What is of mine? He will take of things of mine and show them to you. When he shows them to you, to show them to you, Lord, to open your eyes and make you see them. And when you see them, and you desire them, you ask for them, then you've allowed him to begin to walk, to incubate that inside of you. None of us, our soul actually has capacity for to carry. But what we are supposed to carry as a seed, the womb of our soul is not... I don't know how to use the word. It's not, you need the womb of the Holy Ghost to be in your soul. It has to be true, the Spirit. It has to be true, the Spirit. So he will inhabit your soul. It's like giving you another womb. Because the womb you have, you will, the, you, the thing will trouble you. You will throw it away. But when the Holy Ghost is the one, and when he is to, I, I, I believe there are, there are conditions. When I mean conditions, when he, he knows how to womb, with the womb that will carry Christ as a seed inside of you. He also knows how to with the womb that will carry incorruptible seed, which is the seed of the Father in you. He knows how to with it. Let him just be authorized to bet, maybe they say bet like into the father. He knows the kind of womb that can carry us. So he weaves that womb inside of you and then brings that seed. He brings the seed. How? True revelation. Another word for it is manifestation. True Appearance, that appearance is manifestation, that's the revelation. He will bring it and plant it. And when he plants it, he will also guide it. He can guide it, he can keep. Paul said, I know whom I have believed in. I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which I have committed. So there is, that which I have committed, that's, that's the thing. There is something committed into his hand. He would keep it until the time for bringing forth the Holy Ghost. Amen. Can you say the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost. That's the womb. Everything he knows how to bring it. The seed is our Lord. That's their designation. The Father is always God. The seed is our Lord. 
That's the word. He's the one that can become seed. He's the one that is incorruptible seed. He's the one that is incorruptible seed. But incorruptible seed, he will need Holy Ghost. He will need Holy Ghost to incubate it. Have you seen how they work together? Um, are you following me? Are you seeing how they work together? You will need the Holy Ghost to incubate. And the Holy Ghost knows exactly the condition, the temperature. That will be conducive for this. So, you will see temperature change over you. Season change over you. You're wondering what kind of season is this? No, it's, you've just entered the womb. You see, just... It's as if something just changed. It's no more, it, you, you will know that you're no more in the same season. Dealings change. They've just admitted you into a womb. And you will have to stay there. He knows the right temperature. That's why I said he will not suffer you to be tempted above what you are able. So he knows the right temperature. And the temperature he is going to fix it is a temperature that will be conducive. You know, there's a temperature you will you will put a baby, the baby will not survive. I should remember those days, you know, when my wife is pregnant. She used to like cold water. Cold and, and I think because there's heat inside. When you carry a baby, there's heat inside. So you like to drink cold water to calm. And once you drink cold water, the baby will. And then when it is time for the child to come out, they won't want to come out. Because actually no child wants to come out. That's why when they come out, they start crying. All of you cried. Who didn't cry here? You're looking at me like that. In fact, if you didn't cry, they will beat you. I was watching a documentary of children who are being bettered, you know. This one was, I think they came out through CS, and they didn't know that they were already out. And they were just, you know, it was twins. They just wrapped themselves, the way they were in the womb, they, they brought them out through CS, and they just wrapped up. You know, here in Africa, pow, pow, ah! so these children didn't know that they were already out and so they were not crying. So the doctor had another way to make them cry. So he had to turn up the tap and then pull their head for the water to... You know when you're sleeping, when they... <laughs> so when the tap was dropping on their head, all of a sudden they just got up and then started crying. But here we... The major thing is that you're crying. Whether by water... <laughs> Amen. So like I was saying, the Holy Ghost... Some of us don't... Some of us will... You know, the womb of the Holy Ghost, this, he, will, he regulates whatever is going there, going on in the womb. Because you must look exactly like the one that was planted. So he regulates, he knows exactly. So sometimes it's as if the temperature goes up. And then sometimes the temperature drops. Sometimes you're confused. Where am I? How many of us have been like that? A season in your life, you're just not, you're in the womb. Rejoice. You're in the womb. And a season is like, things are a bit, okay, yeah, 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 I understand what is going on. But sometimes you don't understand. And then we always want to understand. You always want them to explain to you everything that they will not explain to you everything. But you've got to trust that's why Paul said, I know whom I have believed in. And I am persuaded. 
I may not understand everything, but I am persuaded. I am persuaded that I will be like him, for I will see him as he is. He will be manifested to me. He will manifest himself. What well, who is he manifesting? He's manifest. The Holy Ghost has ability to manifest Christ, has ability to manifest the Father. He's the one that will show the Father. Finally, like I was saying, what Daddy said. He said the Holy Ghost. Can you say Holy Ghost? Holy Ghost. I'm excited about it. Can you say Holy Ghost? Holy Ghost. Say it again, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Yeah. That's the kingdom of God. That's the kingdom of God. Even God himself is in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> ah, oh, can I, can, I, can I blow your mind in pieces? Let me blow your mind in pieces. You see the whole universe, everything you're seeing created, all you're seeing is, is, is the Holy Ghost that actually that did it. The Holy Ghost did it. The universe, the world you're seeing, yeah. the physical is yeah. the, but the spiritual is the Holy Ghost that did it. Yeah. But they are not in the Holy Ghost. They are not in the Holy Ghost. They just pushed it out. They just knew what to do. God said, and the Holy Ghost just saw, read the word, and then created something that looked like it. And then, and we are, you know, you are. You are just excited. You are here. You are eating chicken. You are... They just pushed out something. And scientists are struggling. They want to understand the universe. Just go to the Holy Ghost. <laughs> By faith, we understand. <laughs> so if there's anybody who will teach you that, is the Holy Ghost. But much more than that. There is something in the Holy Ghost. There is something in the Holy Ghost. A child of God, you can be born again, filled with the Holy Ghost. Does not mean you are in the Holy Ghost. It's a different thing. Does not mean you are in the Holy Ghost. When you begin to really be in the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost is in the season when they begin to admit you into Christ's kingdom and Father kingdom. The kingdom of Christ and the kingdom of God. That's when they will say you are in the Holy Ghost. Because that's the kingdom of God. So finally, like I said, the Father that dwelleth in me. So how does he dwell in me? By the Spirit. That he has what? Given to me. So there's a Spirit. You see that? The, by the Spirit he has given to me. Listen. That Spirit. Can you say Spirit? spirit. Now it's the Holy Ghost that will do that. I don't know how to explain it for you to see it. The Holy Ghost is the one that bats. Anything he carries the seed and bats will be exactly that thing. So the Holy Ghost takes the incorruptible seed, which is the law that is in the Father, and then bats it in you. Is exactly the same law that is in the Father that now becomes the law that is in you. That is how you know that He dwells in you. It didn't sink. I know it did not sink. I know it did not sink, but I want it to sink. I'll repeat it again. Do you want me to repeat it again? Yes, sir. This is what I said. The Holy Ghost knows how to bet anything. Be it Christ. When he finishes, it will be, it will not just be a resemblance. It will be Christ. 
the Holy Ghost knows how to birth the Father. When he does that, when he did that in Christ, they saw Christ, everlasting Father. And they now say, show us the Father. I said, you guys don't know. Why um, have I been so long with you and you don't know that even the things I'm saying, the words that I'm speaking is the Father. What it means is the law of the Father that is in me that is springing forth this word. This word, when a law is in you, you will speak accordingly. You speak according to the law that is in you, that is operational in you. So he knows how to bet the father. You won't just look like, not just a replica, the exact express image of his person. The express image. When he finishes, is exactly like. By the time he finished with the son, they looked at the son, God himself. God wouldn't say that if the son had anything lacking. He looked at the son. Elohim looked at Adonai and said to Adonai, Thy throne, O God. God said to O God. You don't understand the conversation. God recognized that this is God. You're not looking like me, you are me. You are me. It's I that is in you that is talking. Those things you're saying, they are my words. And then Jesus said, but the thing that is in you is me. I don't, I don't understand what I'm saying. Because I don't have myself. Elohim said to Adonai, thy throne, O oh God, is forever. I, I, I just, what I just saw there was that something, suddenly the Elohim became prophetic. Thy throne, O oh God, is forever and ever. Elohim, Elena, Adonai, thy throne, O oh God. I said, I'm God. But thy throne, O God. So God recognizes God. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is a scepter of your kingdom. You loved righteousness and you hated iniquity. That's how you came into this thing. Therefore, God, even your God, Kai. Has anointed you with wow. oil of gladness wow. above your fellows. Wow. This oil is different from every other anointing. This is oil of gladness. That's the oil of God. They won't anoint you with the oil of God if you are not God. Mm -mm. If you are just looking like him, there's another oil that looks like the oil of gladness. They will anoint you without but. To anoint you with the oil of gladness is to anoint you with the oil of God. The exact oil of God. What do I mean by that? When you say oil of God, it's not ororo. It's not. It's the spirit. Yeah. There's a way the Holy Ghost rests upon the Father. Yeah. That he can rest upon us right now. Oh, Jesus. You don't get me. I say there's a way the Holy Ghost does what? Rest upon the Father. That's the way he envelopes the Father. Hey, Jesus. These are, these are wonderful, wonderful things. There's a way he envelopes the Father. He can't. So you can now understand the Father is in the Holy Ghost. That's the way he envelopes God. That he can't envelope us like that. Like we that. don't. If he... What the Holy Ghost simply does is that if he envelopes you, what you are is what he will show. If he envelopes you, if you are Christ, you'll be showing, he will be manifesting Christ. But if you are, if you have the law of the Father, when he envelopes you, he will be showing the Father. He will take 
the things of mine and then show. He will magnify. That's what he will magnify. So what you've got as your content is what is going to magnify. So that oil of gladness is actually the Holy Ghost. Is the Holy Ghost as gladness? What did I call it? Is the Holy Ghost as gladness? He doesn't show that on everybody. It must be on one who has received the law. That law. Then when he comes upon such a man, then what you're seeing is the Holy Ghost as gladness. And what will he show? God. Amen. Amen. In this season, one of the things I know for sure is that there's going to be a manifestation of the Spirit to bet us. There is going to be a manifestation of the Spirit to bet us into the Father. Meaning, the manifestation of the Spirit for to receive the law of the Father. Carry it, incubate it until full term. He talked about in the book of Malachi concerning the last day. The last day. The last uh, chapter of Malachi. The last verse. Give it to me quickly. Let me round up with it. I've rounded up already, but I just wanted to, thank you. I just wanted to show you something. Give me verse, the previous verse. Behold, I will send you. What? Elijah the prophet. Another place is the spirit of Elijah. Elijah the prophet is not talking about the man himself. He's a spirit. He's the Holy Ghost too. That word Elijah is the Lord God. What you saw, Elijah wore. Elijah wore a replica of what I'm talking about here. Elijah wore a replica. It was not the exact. But he said, in the last day, I will send the prophet, Elijah the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Now what confuses us is when you hear dreadful, great and dreadful day of the Lord. So it throws us off from what that spirit is supposed to do. Let's look at verse 6. And he shall turn. Can you say turn? Turn the father, the, turn the heart of the father to children and the heart of children to father. Now, the, I see it as a dual operation. It's a dual operation. You will be a father. Meaning you will carry the law of the father. But that law of the father is also a law of a child. Is to reconcile. That's how he reconciles. The heart has to be turned. They, they turn the heart to become father. And at the same time, children. God wants such heart on earth. Such heart is the heart that will stay away cause. That heart is a heart, meaning when you say heart, it's men. It's men. If he doesn't find such men on earth, curse will be here. Curse will fall upon mankind. But there's a promise. That spirit is going to be. So I'm, 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 I'm talking about baptism of the spirit of the father. The spirit of the father 
the Spirit of the Father, the Holy Ghost manifesting as the Spirit of the Father, our hearts will be torn. Thank you. Our hearts will be torn. Can you say our hearts? What will happen to our hearts? How they will put laws in your heart. That will make you but wow, that will make you both a father and a child. A law in your heart that will make you both a father and a child. Now, when you see our Lord Jesus, He's both everlasting Father and thy holy child, Jesus. That's the conversion. That's the conversion that the Holy Ghost wants to do to make you both a father and a child. Our Heavenly Father is also like that. He is also a father and a child. 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 That's the greatest in the kingdom. The child, that little child. The father is the little child. You see that little child? Pastor. Can you, you, know, you know what they told me now? That little child is the greater works than this shall you do because I go to the father. That little child is a greater walk. It's a walk. But it's a greater walk. How can a greater walk be? Child. Because it's not easy to turn men who are men to become a child. I pray for this baptism. I said this meeting will not end until every one of us is baptized. Yeah. You will be baptized into the right atmosphere yeah. of the womb of the Spirit. Yeah. You will be admitted. Now, if you have been Kicking, you know when children are in the womb, they kick and disturb the womb. They will sedate you. It's a good prayer. And you're not saying amen about that one. They will sedate you so that you will stay in the womb. You will stay fully until the time. I love... When you hear, and, 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 and the child was in the desert. You, know, you call it desert. That was womb. That was womb. He was talking about John the Baptist. And the child was in the desert until the day of his showing forth to Israel. He was in the desert. Now that desert was the womb. That was the womb of the Holy Ghost conducive for to bring a man like John to form a law called John, John. that can identify another law yeah, yeah. called Christ and declare him. Send him to another place. He won't see Christ. If he had been formed somewhere else, when he sees him, he will not know. But because a womb has conditioned him. I said the womb will condition you. Yeah. I said the womb of the Holy Ghost will condition you. Yeah. According to what the Father has designed for us in this season, the womb will condition you. Yeah. Now, who would have known that the desert is in the womb? Oh, desert, desert. Who goes to desert? But that was the womb. I can give you an example of people. You see, when, when Moses was in, the, in that same place, that was womb. It didn't look like womb. 40 years was the number of the trimester that he needed to be in the womb. And when it was time, they brought him forth and sent him to Israel. And lo and behold, he was a law. 
It was a law they sent to Israel who has already been conditioned. To the children of Israel, they were writing it on tablets of stone, but to Moses, they were not writing it. He is the law. How can a man become a law? How can a man become a law? Others are reading and struggling to, to pattern their lives, but a man, anything he does is the law. Anything he says is the law. Anything he declares is the law. God said, you disobeyed my servant Moses. If there's any prophet among you, that prophet is not a law. I didn't make them to be a law. I will speak to them in dreams and in visions. But this man, this man Moses, my servant. And Paul was talking about him in the book of Hebrews. He said he was faithful in all his house. As an, as an, as an example of things that should be spoken hereafter. That, that, that was a man that came out from the womb. You know, David was also in the womb, running from one place to the other. That was the condition of the womb because he must be the sweet psalmist of Israel. He must connect the throne. He must know about Zion. And he has to fight all the wars of Zion. He has to know about mountains, how to mount up, how to defend. You know, all those things were womb condition until the time when he was born. And immediately he was born, he was anointed to sit on the throne. You will be born. Yeah. I said you will be born. Yeah. You will not be aborted. Yeah. I stand and I counsel. Today I take authority against every spirit that wants to cause abortion of what God is incubating in your life. Today I declare you will stay. Yeah. You will stay. Yeah. Until the laws of the Father is written in your heart. Yeah. These laws are not just, it's not, it's not calligraphy, it's not, it's not writing, it's spirit. It's spirit, written with the spirit of the living God. That's where he put it, written with the spirit, not with ink. But with the spirit. So the spirit can become ink. It's living. But it will write in your heart. What is writing in your heart is spirit. So he will just write your heart. Write things in your heart. By the time he finishes, the man is exactly what God wants him to be. You will be written upon. Yeah. No jot or iota will be missing. I say no jot or iota will go unwritten, unfulfilled in your life. Yeah. He will write upon you fully yeah. until all your slate is occupied. Yeah. There will be no space for any other writing. Yeah. You won't have the law of God and another law. No. Yeah. No, 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 no. It will all be God and God alone. Amen. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way. Have your way. I said this one month, this one month, you're going to have visitations. Amen. Presence. Amen. Presence that will keep you your mind will be so taken because it begins with the mind I, I will write it in their mind and I will put it in their heart your mind will be so taken that those thoughts that used to take you on a ride will not find you again You will be so conditioned in the womb that your mind can't come out. Your, your mind won't think inordinately. Yeah. Will not think the way you used to think before. Yeah. You will remain, you will only think what God wants you to think. Yeah. You know, in Philippians, he said, Finally, my brethren, whatsoever is of good report, whatsoever is of virtue whatsoever. No, he began to mention all those things that those are, those are womb condition. Those are the conditions of the womb. Your mind will begin to think 
within the womb. You won't go out. I said you won't go out again. You will not go out again. You will remain in the womb until your, your mind will be locked in. Kai, your mind will be locked in. By the time you come out, you will not think like men. men. I said, throughout this month, something is going to happen to your mind. And after it, you will discover that you can't go back to where you came from. You will not recover from what is going to happen to your mind. Your mind will be so overtaken. This baptism will be so much on your mind. Your mind, your mind, your mind, your mind, your mind. Initially, you couldn't mind heavenly things. You couldn't mind spiritual things. Things around always takes you. But I said your mind will be hijacked by the Spirit. Your mind won't lead you astray again. The Lord will put an edge round about your mind. You will find strength to get up the loins of your mind. The only thing you'll be doing is hope. You'll be hoping. You will hope. You will hope for the grace that is to be brought to you at every revelation of Jesus Christ. Receive that baptism, I say. Just receive that baptism, yeah. Receive it. Receive it. Receive that baptism. Receive that baptism of understanding. That baptism of wisdom and understanding in the knowledge of God. In the name of Jesus, receive that understanding. Receive that understanding. Paul said that I may be found in him. I want to be found. I don't want to be found anywhere. I want to be found in him. You will be found in him. When they look for you, they will not find you where you used to be before. You know, places of our boat that sin and death has weaned out for you, you weaned out for mankind. They won't find you there. Yeah. You'll be found in him. Yeah. You'll be found in him. Yeah. I say you'll be found in him. Yeah. The Holy Ghost will create that condition. Yeah. You will always be found in him. Yeah. When they are looking for you, I say when they are looking for you, when they are looking for you, it will be said, why seek he the living? You know why it's called the living? The living is the everlasting man. Why are you looking for everlasting man? In the congregation of those who are passing away. I said you won't pass away again. You won't pass away. They will, be, they, they will locate you in the land of the living. That's actually where you're supposed to live. You're not supposed to be found anywhere. You're supposed to be found in Him. In Him is the land of the living. That's where you're going to be found. In the name of Jesus. Let's just give Him praise. Oh, Father, we thank you.